very good day to all of you. It's good to meet you again for today's uh, lecture on uh, food and beverage management, where we have been focusing on the management of uh, food and beverage operations. All through the semester, we have covered a number of uh, topics that we consider are relevant, or I mean that are required for effective management of food and beverage operations. So today we venture into another topic that is related to the menu, and this topic we'll be covering on uh, menu engineering. And so that is what I want us to be able to look at today, and that we'll be able to go through this topic, see what this menu engineering is all about, and how do we do it, because that's critical to the successful and profitable management of food and beverage operations. So welcome. By menu engineering, we are referring to an empirical way to evaluate restaurant menu pricing using uh, the, rest the restaurant's data for purpose of influencing the menu design and content decisions. We saw that on the menu is one of the most critical and important tools that you'll be able to use within your food and beverage operation, just the same as uh, the beverage lists. And so what we are looking at here is how then can we be able to evaluate the performance of the menu items in regard to how profitable they are and how popular they are? And all this becomes critical when we are redesigning or re-engineering the menu. And so that is what we regard, I mean, we refer to as uh, menu engineering. So this will involve categorizing all menu items into one of the four menu engineering uh, categories that are based on the profitability of the item or popularity of that uh, item. While we are doing this, we also must be able not only to know the profitability and popularity of each menu item, but beyond that, to have our knowledge about our customers and an in-depth analysis into the restaurant uh, food costs, menu item prices, and the contribution margins. So these are things we are going to be going through here as we see how do we perform uh, menu engineering. So we'll have a detailed view of uh, the popularity and the profitability of our menu. And so going into this, we we'll look at the process itself. <clears throat> now, no matter what kind of a restaurant or a menu you are having, you can actually be able to engineer the menu for maximum return that you can be able to get out of your restaurant. And this involves five steps. And these are things that I want us now to go through. Step number one, is you choose a time frame. And the goal here is to redesign your menu and shuffle around different items on the page. And these are meant to ensure that it becomes most profitable. So you need to be able to look at the time period that you're going to be using in this uh, case. So you need to figure out when will you realistically be able to do it. Now, upon deciding on the time, what are you talking about in the case to do here is to measure profitability and popularity of your menu items. Now, the inventor of uh, menu engineering, that's Michael Casavana, encourages operators of restaurants to use contribution margin as the metric that will indicate how profitable a menu item is. Now, the other important metric you can be able to use, you can use the menu item food cost. You can also be able to use the menu item uh, food cost percentage. The two of them can still be used. But what is noting, the most critical and important one is the contributory, I mean the contribution uh, margin of every item within the menu. And we'll see what we mean by that. We have given you in the, uh, these uh, notes how to calculate the menu item cost. And we start first by listing all the items or the ingredients that are involved in a specific dish. Of course, don't forget the smaller ones like uh, cooking oil, seasonings, and garnishes. Those are critical. Secondly, based on uh, what you pay for each item, then you are able to calculate the cost of each ingredient in a dish. And thirdly, you compile delivery fees, uh, in interest, and even return charges or any other expenses which you are regarding to the purchasing, uh, uh, the cost of purchasing. But don't include uh, the labor costs in this case. Then you add the costs of ingredients and the cost of purchasing together. Now, this should be able to give you the food cost 
for a specific menu item. Now, that's how you get this. Then when it comes to this that we are saying, where we get the cost of each ingredient, you add the purchasing cost, and that gives you the menu item food cost. Secondly, you can also calculate the contribution margin. And here we think, um, you can imagine majorly, you think about the individual item profit. That is received by looking at the difference between the selling price and the item cost. And we have the formula there. You look at the selling price of the item, then you deduct the menu item food cost, and what you get there is the contribution margin. And so once you have that, then that, as you said, that the first uh, metric, then the other metric you can also use is the menu item food cost percentage and this is rather simple you just define the food cost by the menu price and that gives you and then you model by 100 to be able to get the food cost the percentage of that particular item so depending on what you are going to get out of that then you are able to determine whether you are pricing your dishes correctly for example if you're selling a meal for only 20 dollar or 20 shillings then in that case then and you are say you are you are using eight dollars to produce that item then uh, in that case that gives you your food cost of 40 percent and that's how to be able to get them then once you have got that now you can be able to go to the next step of calculating your menu popularity so with the contribution margin that it gives you the profitability part of uh, your menu engineering exercise then now we want to get the second part the popularity of the menu items now this most time than not the point of sale that you're going to be using should actually be able to count for you the number of items or i mean how many of each item is ordered in a specific time frame remember we said that you first of all choose all the time so depending on uh, your account in your system you'll be able to know if it's the, the bottle of soda you know how many have sold if it's a barbecues you already know how many have been sold for that particular reason so now with this data then it now becomes easier for you to be able to move to the next step so as at every point that we are saying you already know the profitability of your menu items you also already know the popularity of your menu items and i've said with the popularity look at the data from your pos you can also get it from uh, computations out of your food uh, sales history or restaurant sales history all that can be able to give you this so long as you have decided which period you are working with then once you have that then the right thing to do is to categorize your menu items now how do we categorize this what you are looking at we have this uh, spreadsheet that we call the menu engineering spreadsheet now this one categorizes the menu items into four main menu categories the stars the puzzles pro horses and the dogs now, the y-axis of uh, this spreadsheet will be the items popularity, the number of items that have been sold in that particular time period that you chose. And the, uh, the x-axis will be the items profitability, that is the, num the items contribution margin that you are going to be able to have there. And so we have uh, that sheet looking like this, that will be the graph. You're seeing on the y-axis we have the popularity, and on the x-axis we have the profitability. So those items that are very popular and very profitable, we call them the stars. Now, there are those ones which are not popular, not profitable. Those are the dogs. Now, those that are popular, very popular, but not, I mean, not very profitable. Now, those are called plot horses. Then we have puzzles, very profitable and yet not uh, popular. We call them the puzzles, as I've mentioned. And so our next now discussion to this will be to look at then how do what do we do with uh, these particular items or categories when we realize them. Remember, we have a popularity. We also have a profitability of all the menu items that you have within your menu or within your different list. And so within this screen, we are will, as I said, we'll look at each one of them to see what do we do with each of these. Now the stars. We say the stars are highly profitable and highly popular. So for your stars, therefore, what do you need to do with them? These are cheap to make. 
and uh, your guests can actually never get enough of them so they are quite uh, popular and so with this ones then don't experiment with them what we expect you to do is to keep them consistent and promote them in any way you can to make sure they continue being profitable and they continue being popular make sure that uh, i mean be sure to make them extremely visible on your menu when you are designing your menu card make sure the guests are able to see them when we come to the puzzles highly profitable but low in terms of popularity now these are items on your menu that are highly profitable as i've mentioned but are quite uh, difficult to sell because the guests are not asking for them so what do you do to, do you do to these ones try to find out why they are not selling and there are a number of reasons that may come into that because that is the only problem that they are not selling but yet they are quite uh, profitable so probably they could better be described or more prominently placed on your menu might be the guests are not able to see them or they or may also need to be promoted on uh, social media for people to know them about them more or it might even be that the price tag is a little too high or even sometimes you may just need to simply lower the price of it and that will increase its popularity so what we are saying here, look at what do you do to make sure these items become popular with your guests. The third, thing, the third uh, category is the plot horses, and we said these ones are low in terms of profitability, but high in terms of popularity. Quite popular, but when it comes to profit, they're not giving you much. So these ones, what do you need to do with them? Now, the goal that you have with the plot horses is to make them more profitable. Now, the question is the how. One, you can, you can rework the recipe, that you can be able to create a more profitable version of the same item. Or you can pair them with the item with another item in the menu that at least you boost the profitability. That is, we are talking about here, bundling of items together. Equally, you can also keep an eye on the portion size. Might be the portions are big. That way, you are also going to reduce, uh, I mean, on the cost and increase the profitability uh you may also need to check i mean you may also want to decrease the portion size slightly while improving the appearance of the dish all those are part of the things that you can be able to do on uh, those particular category the final is the dogs low in terms of profitability low in terms of popularity now for these ones they are items on your menu that are costly to make and again they're not much of a hit among your guests so expensive to make and guests are not looking for this product so in that case then they are taking up your space on your menu for items that could have increased uh, your profitability basically that's what you say now what you need to do with the dogs is simple consider omitting the dogs alternatively you can de-emphasize them by hiding them on your menu equally you can also try rebranding and reinventing the item before you remove it altogether. So those are part of the options that you take with your products that we are regarding to as the dogs. So you are done with the matter of categorizing. So now looking at your menu items, you already cannot be able to pick the four categories. Which ones are your stars, which ones are your plow horses, which ones are going to be your dogs, and all that. Now once you have that, then now you are ready to go to the step number four of designing your menu engineering findings I mean, you want to redesign your menu with your menu engineering uh, findings in mind. And so when you're going to be redesigning your menu, you need to use the findings that you got from your menu enge uh, engineering, specifically the spreadsheet, to be the guide on how you're going to lay out your menu card. Now, it also becomes important to talk to your trusted customers, of course, about uh, specific menu items. And you learn from them, especially through their feedback. They should be able to tell you more about the product that's what you're talking about in this case so there you're going to be looking at what type of customers order which items whether certain meals drive them to your restaurant or are they attracted by your atmosphere or is i mean do your regulars even uh, read your menu thoroughly because you may find you may be imagining is the menu card that driving them but customers are not actually seeing even the menu card so that's part of what you need to be able to check on that and so what we're indicating here, you saw so feedback from uh, your customers as uh, you go through this. We have four menu design conventions that we encourage you to use while you are redesigning your menu that are going to decide to help you in this. One, you need to highlight your stars and your parcels. Highlight your stars and your parcels. And as you said, 
this i mean use visual cues to highlight the items that you want to sell the most and this ones you can either place them in a box you may use uh, some different uh, coloring of uh, the menu card to be able to highlight those kind of uh, products so different colors you can align them you can use a picture new them you can even be able to label them as special or new all that are meant to draw the eye of the guests towards those particular product so the best practice here highlight one item per category so that you don't uh, end up with so many highlighted products and your menu will be looking full of color all through so that's the thing you're talking about in that case and the second thing that you need to do the second the principle here is to craft beautiful menu descriptions now according to research that will be done by Cornell University many items will sell 27 percent more if they are given a great uh, menu description so you don't just put there the item called the chicken burger you need not to go beyond that and describe what exactly goes in making this burger that's what we have in mind here so don't just list the, the ingredients use evocative words that will pick the guest the interest but of course keep it brief and don't uh, use overly flowery language but you need to make sure that the guests know how much love goes into every single plate in other words color your plates with love messages it read that keep an eye movement parents in mind you need to understand the psychology of the eye when the guest looks at the menu how do they how does the eye move now we have several different schools of thought on uh, when it comes to eye movement parents when uh, somebody is uh, reading the menu card now the golden triangle is one of those uh, that majorly we use where we say the eye will move to the middle first before traveling uh, to the top right of the menu card and then finally to the left side of it the top left so we're talking about from the center to the top uh, right corner then finally back to the top uh, left side that's one school of thought and that's majorly what you have been using most times and not when we're designing our menu cards but the korean research study also gave us another school of thought that a lot of your dinners are more likely to order the first item that they see on your menu so that now talks about emphasizing and bring out prominently your items on your menu which you want the guests to be able to buy so the idea here is simple the diners are going to be more likely to order the first item that they see on your menu so i suggest you cover your basis that is place your stars and your parcels that's the, your highest profitable items at the top left top right and the center so when you are thinking about what do you put this item that you really you sell one you make a cool kill out of the the, the menu in terms of profit please place them on the three areas using the your triangle magic the top right the top left and the middle of the menu then keep your menu short we are recommending that you try not uh, try out having a separate menus for lunch and for dinner services that at least you are not having a fully packed paper having everything put in a single paper you can separate them a session for breakfast another part also a different menu for lunch another one for dinner that's what we have in mind here the reason why we are encouraging this is based on a psychologist called uh, george miller and george miller tells us that uh, most guests may only remember seven pieces of information of course plus or minus uh, two at a given time so when they look at your menu don't expect them to be able to read the hundred plus items that you put there they may only remember the seven piece of information of course uh, plus some uh, small addition in that case so when looking at a restaurant menu guests often have too many choices to process there is not just about the price just about the menu item and so we are encouraging please re reduce the number of items you're going to be having on your menu card now if you have two different creative menus for your different meal services it will be able to lessen the burden of the choices to the guests they can go to the lunch or they go to the dinner or they only deal with the breakfast uh, menus of course this will allow you to play around with the pricing and you can make uh, some uh, plow houses the low profit the high popularity into stars that's a possibility that we can be able to do in that uh, case 
Now, the final point that you need to regard here is to check on your new menu successes. Now, you've already done it. You've redesigned it. Now, you want to see, does this menu really work? Is it working or not? And this will do after some time, after a few months, after you have uh, done your first menu engineering. That was, I mean, the design that you did following your menu engineering. Now, go back and check on how your sales are behaving. In that case, then, you can still be able to do another round of menu engineering, analysis, analyzing, and making one or more. I mean, one or two small takes, depending on how uh, the stars, the puzzle, the plot horses, or even the dogs, how they are behaving, you can be able to, to do another small bit of adjustment to your menu. Then going forward, continue to only test one or two things at a time, so you can keep track of what works and what does not uh, work. I wish to mention, menu engineering will allow you to continue to work to improve your restaurant's profitability and the effectiveness of your menu design. And secondly, use this menu engineering data to guide guest uh, decision-making process. Now, once you have categorized your menu items, you can use this menu, really, uh, data to guide a guest decision-making process so that they select your most profitable item. So it's you to guide them. That's what you try to put across here. And thirdly, you involve your staff in the menu engineering process. Remember, these are the ones that are dealing with the customers, and you need to be able to train them on how they can be able to do redesigning of their menus. And as you're saying, they are actually your best uh, assets before you speak even to the customers. Talk to your staff, know what exactly. They know more about what's happening with your menu items. So good. So that brings us close to our discussion on uh, menu engineering. And I thank you very much for your time. Now I look forward to meeting you online during our online classes. These televised much. lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.